Uh, uh, yeah, uh, top ten time. Uh, um, so I realized as I was going through this that he has a lot of songs that. You know, I don't want to say, like, I don't know what the hell they're about, because that's <laughs> not totally true. But he kind of has this, it, his songwriting style is is kind of less, uh, less story-driven. So he doesn't have a lot of songs about, like, you know, this happened, then this happened, then this happened. He's got a lot yeah. of songs where he's, he's using short sentences and things to convey emotions and things. And so there's a lot of these songs that I was looking at, I was like, you know what? There's like certain lines that I pick out of the songs and that's why I love it so much. But fuck, I don't know what's actually going on in his head when he's singing this. Like at all. So like so the first one, you know, number ten, Lonesome Ten Miles. Feel your rhythm. You are the king of the road. Only thing that you never could do was darling doing what you told. Came down from the north last night. The country be I feel like this is about, uh, like, the 10 miles when he's leaving some girl's place or whatever. Because there's, there's the lines in the song where he talks about, like... But it also sounds like, it, like it's like a, after a breakup or something. Because he talks about how he always stayed, like, stayed just far enough away, but also kind of close. And then he has, there's just a fucking bunch of lines that I don't know what the <laughs> hell is going on. But then he also says, it always comes back to it's a lonesome 10 miles. And so I just feel like there's something going on with... The ten miles from him to this girl, and there's something going on. Uh, but I, I, I really like the song. It just, it's got a great yeah. sound to it. And that's the thing about his music is the, the instruments on it, as well as his like obviously being good at singing. Yeah, I just his sound is just great. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then speaking of that, number nine, things are looking up. Well, a million miles in eighteen months, I bet they're all inside. What started. I feel like 50% of the song is just jamming. Like, there's just a bunch of, like, the mm-hmm. outro I feel like is two minutes long, and there's an extended in the middle. Like, it's just, there's a lot of really great instrumentation. The man um, who doesn't like long outros likes this one even when there's a long outro. Because he's great. Um, but the thing with this one is I, I just love the line where he says, the highs are worth the lows and things are looking up. So he's just basically, you know, things are shitty sometimes and then things get good, and so he may be going through a rut, but then, you know... Things are looking up, you know. There's, there's no, there's yeah. nowhere to go but up, and so, yeah. you know, I can't get, I, I literally cannot get into it more than that. But that's the line that I really love. Yeah. Uh, number eight, learn to fly. To lift me a strapped fence to me, this all does not make sense. What's two and all you need is one. Who's to blame for the empty gun if all tears fall from the sky? Why do they fall from your eyes? Leave a sparkle that you see in dreams. What's to come when the grass don't turn green? It's running fast, can I slow? Still wondering where I'll go. Drifting head in lazy eyes. Oh, me mama has learned to fly around. This is another, I don't. This is a Foo Fighter song, Kevin. Why do you exactly. keep getting confused? It's a Tom Petty song, you motherfucker. <laughs> Foo Fighters. Um, oh no! So learn to fly. I really, I just love the line in the chorus where he's, he's, he's talking about something's going on, but then he says like Foo Fighters, like hold hold on to me, Mama, as I learn to fly on my own. And so it's like that whole imagery of you know learning to fly on his own, Foo leaving Fighters. the nest, all that good stuff. I will kill you twice. <laughs> Um, but it's a really good song. I, I like it a lot. No, you don't. You've That's never not... even listened to Porker McLeod. How dare you? Uh, number seven. Happy New Year. Uh, Who was here, my dear? Who makes their bed and disappears? Oh, I smell your trail.
this is one where I feel like there has been a breakup because he starts the song with like ever since you left I've been living good but then he talk then there's a bunch of lines that make you be like okay maybe he hasn't been living so good but yeah. then in the chorus he ends it with like it's something like you know good like good night good morning hello and happy new year and I hello and so but like when I hear that I like I fucking think of Truman Show where he says like Dude. if I don't see a good night good evening and good afternoon good evening and good night yeah all, all the things and so when I hear so when I hear him uses it in this song I feel like what he's saying is like like and in case I don't see you which I'm fine not seeing you here's all of the greetings that I'd give you yeah. for the next time I see you like I feel like that's what he's doing but again you know I I could be very dumb I am very dumb we are very dumb if this is your first episode I, yeah sorry just to keep listening no, back for just, more retardation yeah. um <laughs> uh, number six, the truth. I really love the line in this song where he's talking about, like, this girl. Where he took this song from well, Jason well, Aldean. Well, he's leaving. Like, he's basically, like, this, this relationship is breaking apart. And he's just like, well, the truth is I love you, but I love this all a little bit more. Like, basically just being out on the road yeah. and, and living life and, and going after the dream. He's just like, so you know, I, the truth is I love you, but I just love this more. And I just think that's a really cool line. And it's a good song. You're a really good song in line. And How stuff. dare you. Uh, number five, meet you in the middle. Hear that whistle, wind and holler, waking you up in the night. All the way from California, Casanova has arrived. Headlined on the morning paper, you read it by the road. Waving goodbye to your neighbor, where the hell are you supposed to go? Guess I'll meet you. Everyone knows. This is the if song. You know but that's the thing. I, I know basically all the words of this song. I still don't know what the fuck he's talking about. It's about because it, it has so many different like things going on. Where he he talks about this girl who like moves out west to like chase her dream or whatever, and then he has more lines about how like you know apparently he got some fancy new hairdo or whatever. But then when he ends the song, he's talking about like. His mom's, like, growing older and, like, going insane. His dad left and, like, left no note when he left. And so I don't know if this is, like, is he, like, singing about, like, like talking about his sister who left? And he's, like, writing her and saying, like, I'll meet in the middle to just, like, see you and talk to you. Or, like, what's going on? I just don't know what it is because it's got these really interesting lines. And especially when it ends and it sounds, like, super sad where he's, like, the dad left and he didn't leave any goodbye letter and... All that stuff. I'm like, damn, I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe it's just But it sounds place. sad. I don't get it. Um, but now, number four, but then also like a lot of these, they all kind of have similar lines in them from here to the to the start, but I really like them. So like misunderstood. Late night train back to Austin. Couple cars call Kane in the interstate. basically talking about this girl's like telling him you know you're no good and he's like well i i hope you that wasn't like meant for me and then he's just like it's okay i'm, I'm used to being misunderstood where like she thinks that he's you know selfish and not caring because all he did like all he's doing is caring about touring on the road and going after his musical dreams and he's like no i like i'd still care about you i just you know i'm i'm you're misunderstanding where my heart's at kind of thing um but it's a really good song i yeah. like it a lot yeah. 
How dare you? I'm sorry. Ah, uh, number three, hell of a year. Now my heart's out of love. I fell out of line. I swore that I'd never leave again, and I lied. It was the weight of the world. You set me free. You can't sleep alone, and you ain't sleeping with me. Even a hell of a year. Oh. It's been a hell. This song, uh, I will not know. I will not acknowledge yeah. a song that has a swear word in the title. How dare he? Oh, he should dare. really go to church. And it's think called H E Double Hockey. He should really year. go to church and think about what he's done Yar! with his life. Let's see. Do I have the? What, there's some lyric in this song I really like, but I. Am... What's a lyric? Uh, oh yeah. So he yeah. So in this song, he, he's he's talking about like it's been a hell of a year, but it kind of sounds like. You know, it's been a hell of a year. Like his music has been going well, and his his life has been going well. But then again, like a, this common theme of this relationship that has died for him to go out on the road. Yeah. Um, but this line in there where he says, "Like, how did you see who I was? Ain't who I was gonna be." I just think it's a really cool line. About yeah, that is cool. Self development. But then that line is also repeated, sort of in the next song in silhouette. He's got the line, so number two, so what? Mama told me I was nothing. That who I was ain't who I am. And living free out here gets long. says who i was ain't who i am and i swore that i'd do the best that i can silhouette is a song that i think is a like a beautiful song and i believe that what the song is about is him seeing the silhouette of like his ex you know his ex you know lover girlfriend whatever creeping. um but like she's like getting married or something and mm. so because like, he says the silhouettes in my nightmares and then he talks at the towards the end about his you know his quote baby in a wedding band and so i feel like it, he must like have seen her or whatever He's wearing a baby yeah exactly he's what? a fucking weirdo hey, uh about? but then he has this line about like who i was ain't who i am and i just think that's a really cool deal and i think it's again like he decided to go out on the road and go for it yeah. and all the shit goes to hell behind him and that's like a really common theme in a lot of his yeah songs. i love how people complain about that i remember it was one time someone tweeted at mike moon pie and was just like why are all their songs like about touring and like being on stage? Well, he goes because that's life. what my life's about. You idiot. exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so it's just like, and so it's like you know if you don't like that theme, I guess you're like, well, I don't. It's like Aaron songs. Lewis's uh, album, the was it seventy four? I don't know. The first full length album he did, he had like all those songs about being out on the road. Yeah, and everyone's like, well, he's just like talking about touring. It's like that's what he does. He's well, exactly. Been the lead it's, singer it's literally for twenty. It's years. literally their life, and so that that's what they're gonna sing about. Of course, you know, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then you know, continuing the exact same theme trend into theme number trend. one, my favorite song, I Can't Breathe. I can't breathe, baby, I'm dying. Why are you crying while I'm trying for this love? I can't believe you think I'm lying. He's, he's basically talking about like being drowning drowning in lake michigan yes it's exactly what it's about <laughs> um but he, he he uses all this imagery about you know he says i can't breathe so like this this relationship is like falling apart and he's like overwhelmed by it um 
but he's talking about like he, he has lines in there where he's talking about like when I'm at home I miss the road and when I'm on the road I miss being at home and yeah. then this this person that he's with is like not understanding his like he's doing this for them you know like yeah. it's a providing for for their family but she's taking it as like you don't care and he's trying to like reconcile this idea that like how do you th- how can you think that I don't care and it's just it's a really interesting chorus but I then mean, you know I it all rolls care. back to to I can't breathe and I think it's a pretty it's a pretty good visual for the like feeling helpless in yeah. this situation yeah so yeah that's Kevin's top 10 I don't like meet you in the middle is the one that I've been listening to for so long the other ones were all ones that I just kind of had heard before like I don't li- like Kevin yeah like I said listens to him a whole lot Often. whereas I just if it comes on it comes like my daily mix which is still always fucking fantastic if Pork or Mc Cheesy comes on then I just how dare you if I sully his name it's McGiblets <laughs> Mr. McGiblets. Uh yeah, but yeah. So like, I, I he's fantastic. I I just didn't have much to add, obviously, to the conversation because I don't know too much about the songs other than Meet You in the Middle. So that was Kevin's top ten. And Hi. I have no input beyond that. He's a very handsome, hands, he handsome. He really man. is. He's and he signed a major deal, so he's very attractive. Hopefully, more people are going to hear his music. And there's and the one thing is that we were we've talked about. I don't know if we I don't think we've talked about it on the podcast, but we've talked about many times with each other of. I just don't see him selling out for his looks because, one, he already knows he's good looking. Yeah. He doesn't have to use that to sell anything. And then, two, like when he's on stage, I've seen people post videos of him like, covering turnpike songs and stuff. Yeah. He's not about to go up there and start rapping. Like, There's no yeah. way he's – unless and, they're holding his family hostage saying, rap this or we'll murder your family. Yeah, and, and I read that he's he's a great musician – I believe at you know multiple instruments, and so I. It, it's another so one is like, Hunter well, Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> Big old airy fart. Um, yeah, it but apparently, like I think that music uh, Parker McCollum's a, a great musician at multiple things, and yeah. so I don't think he would want his craft because you know to go when, to when you're attractive, you might as well also be super talented at everything else. You because... might as well just be better at me at everything. Yeah, fuck that. But yeah, so damn it. Yeah, there's there's no way he's gonna sell out. I just don't see it happening yeah like, I, I i don't either because I, yeah with the integrity he has in his music i don't see them coming up being like yo we'll give you 10 million dollars to sing this hip-hop rap and he's there's i just don't see him being like yeah let's do it like he's gonna be like no yeah like, fuck I, you. I, I would do i don't want. yeah i don't think like, so yeah he plays at like those those festivals that just like jamie lynn wilson and turnpike and yeah co wetzel all them i mean granted co wetzel's a bro like oh yeah <laughs> fucking co and uh uh parker like fucking brad and chad just brad and chad light like they are those people but their music is good yes Wait, and i just don't see that going away because there's because it, it, it's especially nowadays like it used to be back before the radio was just all pop and bro country. It was people making good music, and then they just felt they had to go form into that. But the fact that that's already what's mainstream, like when someone is trying to be that sellout, their music that comes out already sounds like that. Like they're yeah. not putting out this and then going into that. Like there are so many times we get like the new music of the week that I'm when I'm making the list. Like I'll listen to this album, some guy I've never heard of, and his album it just sounds like songs that even Sam Hunt was like, eh, I don't want to record that. Like it's that's what their albums sound like. And it's just like you're trying to get into this field that's already just uh just watered down and shitty by our putting more shitty music into it. So the fact that they're putting out quality fucking music, there's no way they're gonna turn into that. Hopefully. Eat, Hopefully. Eat my words because we were very scared that Luke Combs would and well, he did. Yeah. Um yeah, because yeah, if you go back and listen to our first you know, 10 fucking episodes, we talk about how excited we are for Luke Combs' album. And then when we get to the Luke Combs' album, uh, episode, we're like, well, his new album wasn't that yeah. great. And, yeah, it was kind of shitty. It was kind of not great. But yeah, anyway, uh, anything else on Pricky McCluclu? Prepping prep, prep Mc, McClibbin. I, Jobin. I have nothing. City slacker. <laughs> City slacker. I, I got nothing. That's all I got. I got nothing. Love, take me down to the streets.